Azure Data Factory is defined as a cloud-based ETL and data integration service. The aim of Azure Data Factory is to fetch data from one or more data sources and load it into a format that we process. In this video, we will be covering Azure Data Factory, Azure Blob Storage, Azure SQL Database, and how to copy data from Azure Blob Storage, which is the source, to a SQL Database, which is the destination, using Azure Data Factory. To perform this lab, all you need is an Azure account. To learn more about Azure Data Factory, you can watch our video on the same. You can find all the information and links in the description box below. In the end, we will also share details about our free Azure Data Engineer Masterclass, which will not only help you to understand basics, but it will also give an idea of the learning path to follow. It will be helpful, especially when you're preparing for Azure Data Science Certification. That's implementing Azure Data Solutions, DP200, and designing Azure Data Solution, DB201, which will earn you Azure Data Engineer Certification. Welcome to another episode of Azure Data Science Video Series from K21 Academy, where we take you from complete beginner, covering implementing data storage and designing for data security, to all the way designing for resilience, including batch processing, analytics, architecture, and monitoring, as well as how to prepare for the Azure Data Engineer Certification. We have taken a clip from one of our certification training program on implementing an Azure data solution, that's DP200. And in this clip, our Microsoft certified trainer will talk about Azure Data Factory. So this is a clip taken from a module on orchestrating data movement with Azure Data Factory. Let's hear from an expert trainer on the same. You can see that this is the Azure portal we have, guys. So I have logged in with my account and let's quickly start building this uh, structure and first thing that i need is a storage account then i need a data factory and then i need a database over here where i'm going to load it so let me prepare source and destination first quickly so guys here we have azure portal and guys whatever we generally create in azure we generally call it as a resource it could be a storage account it could be database it could be data breaks it could be data factory it is a type of resource. So let me quickly click on create a resource. And here search for storage account. See this. Quickly create a source. So click on create. And then I'm using a subscription that you will get later. So there is there any resource group. No, we don't have. Let me quickly create a container where I can load all these things or I can create an, uh, everything. Let's say my resource group, my RG. Give a simple storage account name. Let's say my storage account Aman. See, this name is valid. I'm going to deploy the storage account in East US location. That is the data center location of Microsoft Azure, where my storage drive will be created. So performance, what type of performance you want. So I'm selecting standard as of now. The latest version of storage accounts I'm selecting so that I can have the latest feature of it. And RAGRS is my redundant uh, storage. That means when I create a storage account, there is a replica of the storage account for disaster recovery or maybe for any kind of a circumstances will be created somewhere. So where we'll see that technicalities later. Let me quickly create this storage account where I'm going to upload data. So let them validate the names and other things. And then we'll move on to the destination and that is the database. <clears throat> so quickly create it. Let them deploy a simple storage account on cloud. Okay, so guys here I'm creating the destination quickly. Just see this creating a SQL database where I'm going to load the transformed data. So here I have given my resource group that we have just created I give a simple name of database, but there is a one more thing that we need to create is a server. So for every database there should be a server. So technicalities will go later, but let me give you a quick glimpse of how it can be created. 
so give any name as you want my server it should be unique the name should be unique over here guys so name should be my server okay i can give today's date let's say 2102 so this name will be okay then server admin login could be sql admin and give the password to login into my database and here quickly create it first now here i'm going with okay very basic <clears throat> just go with review and create and quickly create a database that means source and destination is now ready now the next thing that i need to create as per the slide is the service that is going to migrate the data that is azure data factory so let me quickly deploy that as well so let them start the deployment i guess it's initialized already so next thing that we need to create over here guys is the data factory so let's quickly create data factory as i said everything is a resource so click on a resource search for data factory so it's very easy to search the resources that you want to create so data factory quickly create this one now here same resource group this uh, region you can select any region it could be any nearby region you have now i can give a name my adf my azure data factory and i can give my name as an extension just to make it unique so click on tab i guess this name is unique as of now what is git configuration we can do it later because it requires more uh, knowledge first of all as of now i'm not going to configure it so quickly review and create it so data factory means my etl tool is available that i can use for data migration but from where from storage account to database so let them validate it quickly and guys yes when you are performing the practicals you have to wait because it's not easy to quickly create everything in just by one click you need to wait for the deployment so you can see each and every service will be deployed on cloud meanwhile what i can do let me prepare the data that i need to migrate so what i'm going to do there is one file i have on my system if you can see file name is input emp this file contains very basic data of employee name that is the first name last name of employee and the salary let's say very basic data and it's a pipe delimited file first name of employee last name of employee and salary structure so this file i'm going to quickly upload on that storage account so that i can migrate it in a tableau format so let's come over here go for all resources and here i have a storage account you can see my storage account aman so click on that and here we have a concept of containers containers means multiple folders i can say so let me create a folder or a container that can hold that file so i can say data container quickly create it in this container i'll upload that file so quickly upload that file Let me search it or I'll do one thing. I'll copy the location from here. So this is the file I'm talking about. Upload this file on cloud so that we can use it as a source. As you can see, file is uploaded. You can also click on add it and see what data we have. See this, same data we have. Now let's start migrating it using data factory. How? So my source is ready my destination is ready and even my transformation and the etl tool is also ready so now search for data factory here and this is the data factory i have my adf aman so click on that and here guys you will see an option author and monitor this click or this window will take you to another window of dedicated server or dedicated workspace of azure data factory here we'll create all the pipelines migrate data transformation and ingestion uh, analysis whatever you want to do you will do it over here so let them open this uh, portal first and then we'll go ahead as you can see and if my screen is uh, not uh, visible let me increase the size of it now it will be okay now the very basic understanding of copying the data from any source to destination will go ahead with this copy data give a simple pipeline name and it will be like copy 
storage account data to SQL DB. Okay, next. Now here, it's a step-by-step, -step, a wizard kind of a tool you can say. For any data source or destination, you have to make a connection first. So quickly create on connection. And here you can see data factory supports this much amount of sources from where you can extract data, almost everything it supports. From any source, you can pick the data, transform it and load it anywhere you want. So go for Azure Blob Storage. It is the storage account connection and search for and give it a name like this. And here we have the subscription. I have only one. My storage account name is this that we have just created. So here, test the connection quickly. So source is ready. Now go ahead with the next and search for that file that we need to migrate. So click on data, double click on that, and you will find your file over here. So click on choose and let them read it. So data factory is capable of reading the format of your file. Let them read it. And we see we have seen that there is no header over here in my file. So it will give the header automatically. You can see. With prop zero prop one, if you have your headers. Enable this one. So we have lots of transformation things we can do. Now where to store it destination so create a new connection and for that search for Azure Azure SQL DB Azure SQL database this one where I'm going to load the data. I'll give it a name. Subscription in which server we have the database DB one. So in this server I have a database name my DB one and how to connect with that using SQL authentication. So I'll give that same login ID and password. But guys here you will face a trouble very basic uh, uh, error we have and why I'm not allowed to connect with this server using data factory. There is one simple setting. I have to do it. Although we'll discuss these things later as well, but just uh, a glimpse of that. So go to your logical server we have just created. And uh, here we have this option of show firewall settings. And just see this allow Azure services and resources to access this server. Click on yes and save it. Now let me try again. See done. Click on create. So my destination is also ready. But guys data is coming from a file and will get stored in a database. But database allows you to store data in the form of tables. I'm not getting the table, but if you want you can also create table at the same time. It will automatically copy the structure for you. So here I can give the schema name give any name. Let's say my EMP table. Click on next see automatically pick the files automatically pick the column name and their corresponding. If you want to give any different name you can let's say. Uh, first name. Last name. And salary you can give your own column names here. So click on next. And here I'm going to click on next again and let them migrate. So a table will be created and data will be loaded over there. So here I can click on monitor and we can view whether data is loaded or we whether the pipeline is completely executed successfully or not. So you can see that it is in progress. So we can click on refresh. Let them migrate. It succeeded. Data is migrated. Now quickly see the data and then I'll hand over to Atul. So here I have my data. So this is my database DB1. Let me go to a query editor window. We can run SQL queries directly on cloud. So it's a benefit of using Azure. But here again, I'm going to have an error. The error is a very basic but very useful security tool offered by Microsoft, and that is. It is not allowed to connect with my logical server directly or with my database directly. My current Wi Fi that I'm using, that IP address is not allowed directly to connect with this. So, for that, click on the set firewall settings, add my current IP address over here, and save it. Then only you'll be able to connect with this. So, another security feature. So, you can see that how, how much secure Azure is. At every level, they have put security levels or security features. So, 
when I expand tables, there is one table created automatically. EMP, let me quickly run a SQL query on the top. And I can say, and do not press F5. It's a recommendation. Always click on run. Otherwise, it will refresh your whole page. You can see that data is migrated. I guess they have not changed the name of column three because I have not clicked on tab. That's the reason. But first column, first two columns are changed. So guys, here you can see that data is properly migrated into a table format. So data was in unstructured format, transformed into Tableau 1, loaded into a database. I hope you understood how Data Factory works and lots of things are more to cover later. So that was a clip taken from one of the lessons from a step-by-step -step training program on implementing an Azure data solution. That's DP200. I would like to invite you for a free 90-minute session with Microsoft Certified Expert Trainer, where we talk about the Azure Data Engineer training and share information about getting certified by using our step-by-step -step roadmap to go from complete beginner to a certified Azure Data Engineer. If you are interested, register for a free class by going on to k21academy.com slash dp200 Additionally, we will show live demo, extract, transform and load data using Azure Databricks. We will also share information about the certification exam. So you can register for free by going on to this URL k21academy.com slash dp200 I will see you in another episode of Azure Data Science Video Series from K21 Academy. Till then, take care.